Hello, welcome to this fourth and final tutorial in the series of videos looking at the interactive software Klimt. Today we're going to be looking at finishing off your Klimt project and uploading it online. In a minute I'm going to open the project we've been working on in the previous tutorials. You'll be able to see when I open it, I've now completed this project, so I've added a lot more sequences and links to it. Okay, let's have a look. So I'm going to go in and push the edit button to open it up. This will take us to our storyboard. And you can see now in our storyboard, we've got a lot of sequences and links in here. So this is my final project and I'm just about ready to export it. There's just a couple of things I need to do to finalize my project before I can take it and put it online. Okay, so pretty much everything we're gonna look at today revolves around these four buttons at the top of the storyboard here. So I'm gonna click on this first one. And again, these are the settings we looked at when we first opened up Clint and started a new project. So we've got our project title, subtitle, description. So you can always go back to these and edit them. So I'm going to add an extra bit of text here. You can add more tags if you want to. You don't want to be messing around with your aspect ratio, so I'd leave that as is. Um, but really what I want to look at today is what we can find in our design tab, our widgets tab, and our share tab. Okay, first, let's look at the design tab. So the first tab we have in here is the skin. And basically the skin is how the player inside the browser looks. So for every Klimt project, it will have this customized skin. And you can decide how the background looks, how the text looks, and how the highlights look. You can even add watermarks and background images. Okay, so we already set up our custom colours in a separate tutorial, but let's have a look at that again. You can see, for my player I've got a black background, my text is going to be white, and my highlights are going to be this bright yellow colour that I've been using throughout my project. My primary interface font is Open Sans, size 14, again. You can change that to the font you've got available in Clint, and you can increase or decrease the size. In a minute, I'm going to show you how easy it is in Clint to add your own fonts as well. Okay, so first, let's add a watermark to our project. So a watermark is an image that will display over your project when you open it in a browser. So I'm going to click on Browse here, and I've got this Bournemouth University logo that I'm going to use. It's quite a small image, 71 pixels by 75, and it's got a transparent background. So I'm going to click open and you should be able to see it's now been added here. Okay, you can make this watermark a link as well. So I'm going to make it link type web link and I'm going to link it to the Bournemouth University website. Let me just get that open. Okay, there it is. So if I now go back to Clint and I paste that in it will link to that website. And you can decide where you want to display it. So position, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. I'm going to keep it in the top left. Obviously the next thing I want to do is see how that looks. But before I do that, I'm going to add a background image as well. So that when we run our project and preview it, we can view both the watermark and the background image. Okay, so I've got this little tick box, display background image, it's ticked. And I'm going to click on browse. Uh, I'm going to go and find an image to use as my background image and I think what I'm going to use is that computer image that I used for my menu in tutorial 1. Okay, there it is. And now I'm going to click save and I'm going to go file, save file, run project. So my project now opens in the browser and we can see my watermark in the top left hand corner and if I go down to my footer, I'm going to show you how to set up this footer in a minute and customize it. If I go down to this footer and I click on credits, you should be able to see in the background there my background image. Okay, so we've got our watermark on our sequence, and we've got our background image that shows behind our index and our credits. Okay, let's go back to Klimt, 
so I can jump directly into the design options by clicking on this paintbrush here. And I've now set up the skin as I want it to look. So I can go through these other tabs, and we've got textiles. This is for customizing how your default fonts look. So you can see you've got six options here. It's generally best to go through and set these up before you actually start your project. I'm quite happy with how the fonts look, so I'm going to leave them as they are. Button styles we looked at in a separate tutorial. But let's just go over that again quickly. So if you want to affect how one of these buttons will look throughout your project, you do that here. So I know, for instance, I've used this right arrow to skip sequences at times. So let's customize it just to make it look a little bit different. And again, I'm going to go back to that yellow that I've used throughout our project. And I'm going to use that. So hopefully you remember Buttons have two different states, default and hover. Default is how it will look instantly when you see it on the screen. Hover is how it will look when you put your mouse over the top of it. And if we go to our preview down the bottom here, you can see my buttons border has now turned yellow and the opacity increases as I put my mouse over it. And obviously we could go through and change all of our buttons, but I'm only interested in the ones I'm using in my project. And at the moment, that's the right arrow and the launch button. OK, now finally, in this design section, we've got fonts. So if you want to add a different font to Clint, that's really easy to do. And I'm going to show you how to add a font by selecting a Google font from their website. So I'm going to go into Chrome. And I'm going to do a search for Google fonts. And that'll take me to their website. And now I have to pick a font to use. So let's see if we can find something quite distinct. OK, so let's say I want to use this font, this Patrick Hand font. If I click on this red plus, it brings up this little option down the bottom that says one family selected. Click on this. And what I can do is download this font. So using this little arrow that points down here, I can click on that. It will download. I then need to open up the zip file it gives me. So I'm going to open that. And in that folder, I've got a TTF file. And this is basically what we need. So now if I go back to Clint, I bring my finder up over the top of the Clint window. All you have to do is drag and drop this file into your font section. Okay, and if I scroll down, there we can see that font has now been added. And if I want to use it in my project, I would just have to save, go into a sequence that has text in it, select that text, highlight it, and then obviously from the font drop down, select the option I want to use. I actually don't like that font at all, so I'm going to undo. But that's how you add a font if you need to. OK, so we've just been through the general settings and the design settings. Now let's click on this option. So this little button that looks like a book, if I click on that, these are my widgets options. And basically, your widgets relate to what's showing your footer. So if you remember before, when I last previewed my project, in the footer, I had a link for an index, and I had a link for credits. Well, not only can we customize both of these options, we can add extra options into our footer. So the first tab you've got under widgets is your footer. And you can see you've got a little tick box to show footer. So if you want to, you could actually turn this footer off. You can change the footer height here, so it's currently set to 26, I could make it bigger. And here we can add footer links. So once again, at the moment we can see index and credits. Those are the two things we have in our footer. Okay, so before we add a new item, let's go and customize these two. So we've got index and credits. And here in the tabs along the top, I can access the index menu. So I'm gonna click on that. And it basically shows me all of the sequences I've currently got shown in my index. So by default in your index, 
Clint will show every sequence you add to your storyboard. However, you might find that in certain projects you're working on, you don't want to have every sequence being shown in your index. You might want to hide some. So for example, let's say I don't want my instructions showing. All you have to do if you don't want a sequence to show in your index is just drag it from the right hand side to the left. So maybe there's a few sequences I don't want to show. I just drag them from the right to the left. Down the bottom you have options of how your menu can look. And we can see we've got grid mode and list mode. So grid mode will obviously show them like a grid. List will show them like a list. I'm going to keep it as the grid mode for now because I think that looks best. And I could click save, but let's go and change my credits as well. So if I click on credits, you can see we have our credits options. And currently the only information in your credits is what you filled in when you completed your general tab when you opened up your project. And we can see our title, Bin Appetit, A Freegan Adventure. Subtitle, An Interactive Documentary Exploring Freegan Lifestyle or whatever that says. And then we've got our about section. So all of this comes in from our general tab. If you want to, you can untick it where it says copy project title from general information or where it says copy project subtitle from general information or where it says copy project description from general information and you can alter it just for your credits. I'm actually happy with the information I put into my general tab. So I'm going to leave my title, subtitle and about section as is. But I'm going to put in some credits just so we can see how they look. So let's just make some credits up here. So you can see I've got a big ego, so I've included my name here for pretty much all the roles. But obviously, depending on who's worked on your project and what roles you've had, you can add as much or as little information here as you want. Okay, so now I'm going to click on save. And let's run our project to see how our index and our credits look. So file, run, run project. It's going to turn the sound off. And there we have index and credit. So if I click on my index, there we can see it's displaying like a grid. And we've now got those sequences we moved from the right to the left, not being shown in our index anymore. And the index is basically like another menu that your viewers can use to jump to different sections of your documentary. So if I click on this dinner option now, they can jump into here. Okay, let's have a look at our credits. So not a great deal of information in here, but again, you can see title, subtitle, about credits. Again, it's nice to give credit to the people who have worked on your project, and this is obviously an area you can do that. 